Hi, I'm Mark with Macroscopic Solutions and welcome to the 2020 uh, MacroCore setup and demonstration. Uh, I'm going to walk you through how to photograph drill core uh, using three different modes or functions. One is going to be a standard panoramic without focus stacking. The next is going to be an XY scan. So this is combining focus stacking with panoramic photography. And the other is going to be an XYZ scan where what we'll do is we'll use a little bit higher powered optics and then we're going to do a panoramic along the X and the Y uh, sections of the drill core sample. And we're also going to do that in combination with focus stacking. It's, it's rare that you're going to need to use that type of capability, but what it will yield is very high quality results of a particular drill core specimen that you have an interest in. So let's get started on the setup. Okay, so to build out the macro core system, uh, there's a few things I want to mention, is that these sliders do come in multiple lengths and they can be supported with multiple carriages in case you need one or two more cameras. Uh, we're only going to set up one as the, the method to set up multiple carriages is exactly the same. The other thing I want to mention is that it's very important to have a very flat surface table, one without much variation, but in case you do have variation, these rubber feet can be extended in order to actually um, provide additional support underneath the camera system as it's moving. But to add some additional support, we have some stabilizers we're going to add, uh, and then also an adapter which is going to mount a stack shot, which also dual purposes as another stabilizer. So what we're going to do, we're going to take out the two bolts, we're going to slide that underneath uh, the carriage or the slider, and then we're just going to hand tighten a few of these just to get them started. You just want to move the rubber belt to the side very gently. And you want to take a 3 16 Allen key and you just want to gently tighten these bolts down. So uh, don't over tighten. So we don't need to move the Allen wrench in order to, to get additional leverage. Uh, we just want to very, very gently tighten them so that the bolts are snug. So just using basically two fingers uh, is, is a good, uh, good rule of thumb in order to, to tighten these. Okay, and as I mentioned, uh, we're going to add a few of these stabilizers. These stabilizers also dual purpose as adapters. Uh, so in case you have core boxes or other types of samples, uh, we can mount and make um, different, different mounting adapters. But everybody has different specimens, different core lengths, uh, different materials. So generally, um, the clients need to come up with a, with a solution to, to mount their materials. But at the very least, again, these are just excellent stabilizers for beneath the system. To get the, uh, the right stabilizer on, you can just gently move the carriage down the slider. So we're going to go ahead and add this on the other side. And again, gently hand tighten. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is take our um, controller carriage. So. What this is going to allow you to do is mount the controller. It's also going to provide the foundation upon which the, uh, the camera system is going to, going to rely on. So you're going to take a 1 8 Allen key. There's two screws through this RS adapter. And you're just going to take this um, carriage and you're going to mount it directly into uh, the aluminum base plate on the carriage. And again, don't over tighten, but again, just tighten so the bolts are snug. But just you want to be cautious of over tightening. And this, uh, this controller um, adapter also supports the, the external battery pack. So what that's going to do is allow you to get your cables uh, down to a minimum. That way there's not a lot of cables around when you're moving uh, the entire system. So what we're going to do is take our controller. That just sits right on top and you can go ahead and plug the external battery pack in. When it's not in use, you want to make sure you're keeping that external battery pack charged. So the next thing we're going to do, we're going to take our carbon fiber arm. These are going to arrive to you pre-installed with a dovetail plate on the bottom. That's for mounting onto the adapter. And also um, one of these uh, rotational stages, which allows you to actually point and move the camera anywhere on 180 degree axes. Again, that's already going to be installed as well. Uh, the other thing about this arm is that if you need an increased working distance, if you have larger materials, you can just loosen it up and extend it like so. But for now, uh, we're just going to tighten that down. Oop. Yep, went the other direction with it, tighten it back down so that it's in a stable position. There we go. And what we're going to do is take the dovetail and we're just going to situate it in the adapter plate. Just like that. 
The next thing you're going to do, you're going to take your stack shot. This is already pre-equipped uh, with an adapter plate. One thing to mention, you can turn this adapter around so that it actually faces backwards. And what that'll do is instead of your camera sitting on this position, your camera's going to be positioned more back here. So again, if you need to extend your working distance, you have a lot of flexibility to rotate and move brackets around. So this is an adapter that's going to hold your, your lens foot plate. This adapter is just going to give you some added distance, again, can be turned around. And this is the adapter that's going to support the flash system. So what we're going to do, motor towards you, uh, we're just going to situate that on top of that carbon fiber arm. So again, just take the screw knob and gently place that in. And initially what we're going to do is we're going to be using the 100 millimeter lens, some more macro work. That way it's more uh, useful for just your standard panoramic motion. Uh, so we're going to have this position pretty high up on the carbon fiber arm. Okay, the next thing to do <coughs> is to take your uh, flash, flash arms. And what you want to do is just screw these in. So I've got, actually before I do that, I just want to describe how these things work. If you loosen this red knob, everything becomes very loose. But if you tighten it down, everything becomes very stiff. So you want to make this as tight and as straight as possible. And then you just want to use two hands and get this thing nice and tight uh, against that, that flash adapter bracket. Okay, so that's, that's really nice and tight now. Now one thing we could do is take that red arm, loosen it up, and then we can put it into a preferred orientation with wherever our flash is going to be. So in this case, it's actually okay to leave it, leave it out like this, um, just because we're gonna orient the whole system down. So just have, have it kind of sticking out straight, just like that. We're gonna do the same thing with the other side. Right now, this is positioned so that it's really nice and stiff. And again, we're gonna tighten that down. Okay, loosen up the red arm and put that into more of a preferred orientation for you to mount your flash head. Okay, so that's them. So now what you can do is you actually have full motion. So depending on your adapter and where your camera is going to sit, this can actually rotate and flex on a single pivot. And then you'll just tight, hand tighten the knob in order to make it nice and stiff and straight. But for now, again, we're going to leave it at that angle just while we set up so you can see everything that we're doing. So as I mentioned, you can receive this system, or you're going to be receiving multiple lenses, but there's two options. There's your high magnification 1 to 1 to 5 to 1, so this is 5x magnification, the MPE 65 in my right hand, and in the left hand is my 100 millimeter lens. So the 100 millimeter is more macro, and because drill core is quite large, macro is the lens that we're going to be using. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to place the 100 millimeter macro in the adapter. We're going to clamp, hand, hand clamp that, that into place. Then you're going to take your camera body, and with doing this motion very smoothly but quickly, you want to remove the back dust cap and the dust cap from the body, and you don't want to move the camera body a great distance. You want to have it pretty close to the lens and just gently lock that into place. Now, you can just, so you don't lose them, just mount the two dust caps together, and this you're actually going to keep and just put back here, because what we're going to end up doing, what I'll do is slide the, uh, the camera out of the way so you can see. We're now going to mount uh, a secondary stack shot, which is going to be used to support our core sample. So this is again going to come pre-installed with a core adapter. You have a thumb screw on the bottom side and you can manipulate and move this in order to straighten out your core sample. But this allows you to automate three axes. And again, we're only going to use two axes of automation, but at least you can automate three just to get your specimens in place. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So we're going to loosen the adapter and you just want to tighten that into place. Now, because it's on the front end, and basically you're going to get some bounce at the end, it's good to just take your lens cap and just place that under the rear side of the snack shot. That way it adds to the stability uh, of the overall system. The next thing we're going to add is our flash. So this is the MT26EX. We'll just move this, actually before I do that, back into place so you can get a better vantage point. Okay. So we're just going to take this flash, slide it into place, and move the lever so that it locks. We're going to take one flash head, we're going to situate that in the shoe. One thing you could do is kind of wrap around the cable, uh, that way they're, they're not falling in front of the lens. 
So just take the little lens brackets and just sort of, again, wrap the cable around each side and situate the flash heads. Next thing you want to do is add your diffusers. These turtle dove diffusers are what deflect the light to give you a really balanced look without the use of a polarizer. These are going to give you much better light than any polarizer or any direct light source is going to give you. So you'll just lock those into place. And now what you're ready to do is actually point the entire system down right towards your sample. And again, you're just going to tighten that thumb, not thumb screw to make that really nice and tight. Now, because we're using the 100 millimeter, we're going to have a, a very large core sample here. We're going to raise the height of this carbon fiber arm. And we're just going to bring it up until we extend at maximum capacity. And you have a little bit of motion to actually move the camera left and right, not much, but a little bit just to make sure that it lines up straight with where your material is. The last thing we're going to do <coughs> is add our external power pack. So what this is going to do is going to allow your flash to keep recharging much faster. It's also going to allow you to get a lot more uh, use out of it before you need to recharge the batteries. So what we're going to do is just sort of attach that to the bottom of the carbon fiber crank arm. It doesn't really matter what position or what side it, it's located on. And then this cable is going to extend up and it's going to mount directly into the pack of the flash. Now, you'll notice that there's a bit of motion here. That's okay when you're dealing with macro because what we're doing is we're taking single exposures and there's not going to be enough variation to really distort or change the quality of the images and the overall stitching. And when you do lower this for more high, high magnification materials, this arm becomes stiffer, everything becomes stiffer, and that's where you really need to cut down on vibrations. Uh, but for this type of macro work, you don't need it. So don't worry, don't be too concerned about any, uh, any motion that the system carries at this range. I'm just going to put the Allen key back. And now let's walk you through how to set up all of the cables. So for this demo, what we're going to do, you have the option to power the camera unit directly into the wall using an AC adapter. That's useful, but again, the batteries have a lot of use, and it's good to just use the battery here because you cut down on the, on the overall amount of cables you have. So in this case, we have a battery uh, thrown in here. We're also gonna use the battery for the stack shot. And then what you're going to do is take your shutter cable. So this attaches the stack shot controller um, to the, the camera shutter itself and allows you to uh, integrate motion with image capture. And that goes in in one orientation on the door on that camera body. So now that that's attached, what we're going to do is attach our motor cables. So you have a few options. You have some short cables and some long cables. Uh, and the cable arrangements and setups are going to be different for panning, uh, XY scanning, and XYZ scanning. In this case, the Y axis is going to be your slider. So you're going to take one of these short cables because the controller is really next, really close to the port here. You're just going to go ahead and connect your y-axis to the slider and then you're going to take one of the longer cables and you're going to attach that to your stack shot controlling the camera your focus stacking motion is going to be your x-axis and just so you don't lose the capability of being able to manipulate your specimen up and down we're going to plug in the z-axis to the sample carriage holder Okay, and we're going to attach that there. So then you can power on your stack shot, and just to give you a quick walkthrough, uh, I can show you how all of the motion on this is going to work. So I can just open it up so I have control over all axes. The x-axis is going to be moving the camera relative to my sample. The y-axis is going to be moving the camera down core or up core. And the z-axis is going to be moving your sample closer to the bottom of the camera frame picture or further to the top of the, the picture frame. So those are the, the three axes of motion, and that is the overall setup of the macro core system. But one thing we're going to do as well is we're just going to add a sample. <clears throat> so in this case, I have a core sample of limestone. What we're going to do is just sort of move the camera out of the way. And then we're going to mount this core sample so you can see uh, how this gets adapted. So we're just going to place that gently into place. There's some protective foam on the bottom. You're just going to gently use these, these positioning bolts to secure the sample into place. 
Now you can change uh, it's how level it is. And one thing you could do just to sort of speed everything up is maybe get low and take a look, eye, eye it up and make sure that it's in an orientation that seems like it's fairly perpendicular to the camera's axis. And also in case what you want to do is just look at this line and try to get it as parallel as possible to the slider. Um, that way you don't need to rely too much on, on capturing or changing depth of field. But there you go, that's your actual core sample now in place uh, and ready to be photographed. So let's just move the camera back into place. And that is your overall setup of the Mac Core system. So in the next video tutorial, what I'm gonna do is show you how to take panoramic photographs through this core. It's very straightforward. Uh, and then we'll move on and get into some more sophisticated image capture shortly thereafter. Uh, thank you for following this uh, setup tutorial and uh, stay tuned for the next video. If you have any questions or comments, uh, please just contact us directly or using the forum on macroscopicsolutions.com. Thank you.